Good morning, church. It's Friday morning. Take your Bibles. Let's go to John chapter number six. We're going to pick up again after Jesus has told them that I am the bread of life. I supply everlasting life for those who will ingest me or take me into them, into their bodies. I will be the one who I will give them uh, eternal life. Now, in verse number 60, it's an important part of the message because John is showing that many people, even in the days of Jesus, rejected the fact that Jesus was more than just a mere man or a prophet or even the Christ, but not he certainly wasn't the Son of God in their mind. And so they're going to turn away. But I want you to notice how the discussion goes in verse number 60 because it's much like this today when people get to a point where uh, the teachings of scriptures don't agree with what their concept of God or Jesus is. Verse 60, Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? Now what he's talking about is taking the bread and even eating his body. He's talking about his body as being the bread and not talking about literal cannibalism. But he's talking about bringing Christ into our lives and they don't get these spiritual teachings. And so this is hard sayings, they said. Verse 61. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? If this offends you that I'm claiming to be God or I'm claiming to be someone special, what, what are you going to do when you see me ascend back up to where I came from. I came down from heaven. I told you I'm the bread. God sent forth bread to the Jewish nation when they were in the wilderness. God sent Jesus, the bread of life, into the world. And he said, what are you going to do when I ascend back up into the Father's presence? It says uh, in verse number uh, 64, and there were some of you Excuse me, let me start back at verse number uh, 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. Now, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. In other words, they couldn't accept the teachings of who he was. They weren't going to accept that he was God in the flesh or that he was the Son of God. These statements didn't make much sense. And so rather than continuing to follow to see if it be true, they decided to go away. Then Jesus said to the twelve, that is to his apostles that he chose, do you also want to go away? Now, here's the great statement of Peter. And I love this statement. I think he spoke it on behalf of all the disciples. They were probably thinking the same thing. And this is where I go when I don't understand why God's doing what he's doing. I don't understand uh, how he's doing what he's doing. I, I don't understand. And sometimes it even seems like he's violating maybe some things I, I believed about God and about salvation and things. When life just doesn't make sense, here's a good verse for you to be reminded of. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, that is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, did I not choose you? the 12, and one of you is a devil. Now, of course, it says, he spoke this of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the 12. Now, Jesus says to the disciples, are you guys going to go away also? Is this just too tough for you uh, in your confusion and your anxiety and I'm not matching up to what you think the Messiah ought to be? Are you going to go away? And, and Peter says, Lord, where would we go? <laughs> we have come to believe that you're it. You're the Messiah, the one that has been sent in the world. You're the Son of God. And let me read between the lines. He would probably go ahead and say, we don't understand what you're saying anymore than those people who just left. We don't understand 
why you're talking about things that like crucifixions and, and resurrection. We don't understand all these things. This one thing we do know. We know that there's nowhere else where we can find eternal life but in you. For we have come to believe you are the Messiah. You are the Son of the living God. In other words, we got nowhere to go. We, we believe it's you or nothing, Jesus. And that's what I, as a, a young man, I, I'm so quick to embrace that, even though I didn't know much about Christianity at all when I was saved. I didn't go to church. Our family didn't go to church. I was 16 years old and never been to church to worship God. And finally got invited to church and went and began to understand a little bit. Finally was saved, received the Lord into my life. And from that moment on, there were a lot of times I just didn't understand what the teachings of Christianity were and why things were happening the way they were. But it was always this. I know without a doubt, Jesus holds the key to eternal life and that there's life in no other person other than Jesus. And so I'm just going to keep clinging to him and hopefully things will make sense down the line. And eventually most did. I'm still confused about some things, still wondering about some things, but I just keep clinging to Jesus. And that's what these disciples are going to do all but one. One would fall away with the rest of the crowd, but the rest would hang on until a lot of it began to make sense and they were able to serve the Lord fully and faithfully. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the salvation that you've provided for us through Christ who is Lord of all. And even, Father, in those days when there doesn't seem to be enough light and darkness seems to prevail, when there's when things don't make sense, when life seems to be caving in and falling apart, when all that we believed and trusted in seems to be uh, being pulled out from underneath us, Father, we're just going to simply say we trust in Jesus because we know that He and He alone holds the keys to eternal life. And He grants to those who trust in Him everlasting life. Thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.